topic of standard costing builds off of what we learned in budgeting, especially flexible budgets. So to set the stage to understand what standard costing can do for us, let's make some pies. And to make pies, we need ingredients. So we need some standard for the quantity that we use. We can't just throw in anything we want. There's a recipe that calls for a certain amount of this, a certain amount of that, a certain amount of the other thing. And we have to buy these things. So if we need a certain amount of filling, we have to buy that amount. If we need a certain amount of sugar, we have to buy that amount. So our ingredients A, B, all the way through N, and each one will have a price associated with all the way through to N. And we'll come up with some standard cost of how much it costs to make a pie. This is everything in, all the quantity and uh, the price of that quantity. That's our standard price for the raw materials. Now we're going to make 100 pies make 100 pies. So our actual results, we made 100 pies, we're going to look at our actual quantity that we used in making those 100 pies, and we're going to look at the actual price we paid for all our ingredients. So we have quantity A, B, all the way through to N, and we have our dollar cost for each of the ingredients. And in looking at variances, we might say, hey, we used way too much of B, and we paid too much for A. Flexible budgeting doesn't allow us to find these type of variances. Variances are also called exceptions. Flexible budgeting allows us to see whether we were over budget or under budget, favorable or unfavorable, but we don't know whether it was the fault of using too much raw material or whether it was the fault of raw materials costing too much money. Here we break it down into quantity and price. We set standards for the amount of quantity in a unit and the price of those quantities. We can set an ideal standard, which allows for zero variance from perfection. In other words, everything goes as planned. Nothing goes wrong. Prices don't, uh, don't go up. There's no inflation. There's no wastage, spoilage, theft, anything. It's perfect. Not very practical. So we have what are called practical standards. If ideal standards aren't practical, let's have a practical standard. This allows for normal inefficiencies so that the abnormal inefficiencies will show up as a variance. We'll know whether it's a variance in the quantity or the variance in the price so we know what to fix. Saying that you were over budget by $80 or under budget by $1,000, well what do I fix? Here we would know, well it's the quantity or it's the price. So let's have a look at our manufacturing costs again. We're going all the way back to the beginning. And we have, of course, three manufacturing costs. We have direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead, both a variable and fixed component to that. We will find that for every product that we have, that we have a standard for all the three inputs. There'll be a material standard, a labor standard, and an overhead standard. Product two will have its own set of standards as well, but it may be different. It may require more raw materials, very little labor, and more overhead. All the way down to end products, all the products that we, uh, that we produce. And that may have very little raw materials, a huge amount of labor, and very little overhead. So for each of these products that have each of these standards for each of the three manufacturing costs, there will be what's called a standard cost record. And the standard cost record will list for this product, the direct materials, the direct labor, and the manufacturing overhead. It'll list the standard quantity and the standard price of each one. So there'll be a standard quantity of direct materials used, a standard quantity of labor, a standard quantity of overhead. Each of these will be priced out so that we will have a total price for this product, a total standard price for this particular product. And we can compare that standard with the actual results to isolate whether the variance is a quantity issue or a price issue. So let's have a look at how we develop these standards for each of the three uh, manufacturing costs in a little more detail. Let's start with direct materials. And we need uh, some measure of what the standard quantity per unit and Keep in mind, we're doing this per unit, the standard quantity per unit, and a standard price per unit, given what our quantity is. 
Now, our quantity is not just the raw materials that we that that enter into the finished good. It's the direct materials required, number one. To that, we add what's called unavoidable waste. Let's say that we buy a, a piece of metal and we have to shave off the corners to make it beveled on the corners. Well, you're going to lose a certain amount of weight on that material. That's just unavoidable. That's just part of, part of the process of, of uh, creating the output. Plus rejects, because not every unit that you produce is going to meet specs. Some of them might be rejected. For the standard price, we're looking at the final delivered cost. For those in the industry, you'll recognize the term dead cost. What is your dead cost? And your dead cost is your cost of the, of the raw material, plus the shipping, plus any insurance that you have to pay for, plus any receiving costs. In other words, it's, it's your cost on the warehouse floor. Once it hits the warehouse floor, then any, any other handling to that is part of overhead. But to get it onto the floor, onto the warehouse floor, that is everything. That's your all-in cost, your dead cost of your raw material. So your bill of materials for product one may look something like this, depending on, on how many uh, inputs there are to the finished good. You'll have a standard quantity, a standard price, and we multiply the two to get quantity times price. So direct material one, direct material two, all the way down to direct material n, however many direct materials are required to make up product one. The quantity, the standard quantity of each, the standard price of each, and you just multiply them out and add them together, and that should be the standard cost. The total of this is the standard cost in raw materials for, for that particular product, and each product will have its own cost record, its own bill of materials as well. So let's have a look at direct labor and how we arrive at a standard for that. We need a standard quantity per unit, and when we talk about standard quantity in direct labor, we mean how many, how many, what portion of an hour, uh, let's say, does it take to make a unit? So when we're done with standard quantity, we'll get some total time, whether it's an hour, hour and a half, two hours, etc. And then we need a standard price per hour. So let's deal with the standard quantity. How long does it take to make a unit? How much time is involved from beginning to end? Well, you'll have your labor time. You'll have a, a, a spreading out of the breaks over that labor time. Uh, time for cleanup and reject work because reject work gets rejected. Well, that time has to be apportioned to all the good units. And we'll come up with some total time it takes per unit. For a standard price, we have our wage rate. Let's say it's $15 an hour. On top of that, there'll be payroll taxes. The company has to pay tax, uh, has to match certain deductions and pay that to the government. On top of that, there are benefits. It's not uncommon for, uh, uh, let's say, a $20 wage rate uh, that's paid to an employee uh, to end up being close to $30 all in, so that the employee costs the company actually $30 an hour, not $20. So, you know, you got to be aware of that. Now, this price per hour, think of it more as a weighted average per department, because not everyone in the department is going to make the same amount uh, uh, per hour. Well, that's just not going to happen. You're going to have some that make more, some that make less. So the wage rate per hour is more of a blend, a mix that represents the type of employees that are in that department. And you just multiply them together, the total time. Uh, let's say it's an hour times the cost per hour. There we go. For manufacturing overhead, you'll recall that uh, way back we uh, calculated the predetermined overhead rate. So we'll need some rate. And we multiply that by the hours, the activity driver. Here, this total time, in, if it's direct labor hours, we will just use the standard we calculated for direct labor. It might also be machine hours. But the one uh, that I've drawn the arrow to is for direct labor hours. So we'll take the rate multiplied by the hours. Now, it gets a little tricky in standard costing because we can't just take the predetermined overhead rate. Recall that our predetermined overhead rate is comprised of two parts, a variable overhead rate plus a fixed overhead rate. So we're going to calculate a variance 
for the variable overhead rate and a variance for the fixed overhead rate. But the fixed overhead rate's a little bit different and, and a little bit tricky. So um, for the variable overhead rate, it's the same as doing the direct labor uh, and the direct materials. It's the same process, but for the fixed, you're going to want to pay attention to this. So a standard, I think you can tell right now, is basically a budget for one unit. It's all we, how much in direct materials, how much in direct labor, how much in variable manufacturing overhead, how much in fixed manufacturing overhead. There is our total cost per unit. It's basically a budget for one unit. So here's what we'll do. We'll take our actual quantity of inputs times our actual price. And this we'll use some algebra. We'll call it AQ times AP. This is what we actually do. Our actual quantity times our actual price. We will compare that with the actual quantity of inputs times the standard price. We want to isolate any price variance. So notice that we're using the actual quantity in both. AQ times AP is the actual quantity times the actual price. AQ times SP is the actual quantity times the standard price. When we do this, we will get a price variance. All we're doing now is looking at for the, for the actual level of Q that you used, we're comparing the actual price versus the standard price. We're isolating the effect of price. For raw materials, we get something called a materials price variance. Makes sense, right? Raw materials, and this is a price variance, so it's a materials price variance. For labor, we get a labor rate variance. Did we pay more per hour or less per hour? And for variable uh, uh, manufacturing overhead, we'll get a spending variance. Notice I just did variable here. Fixed is something completely different. So just remember that this is just variable. We get a spending variance. Once we have the actual quantity times the standard price, we're going to compare that to the standard quantity allowed for the actual output. In other words, just like a flexible budget would, the standard quantity allowed for the actual output times the standard price. So it would be SQ times SP. And this will give us a quantity variance. Notice what we're comparing it with now. We're only comparing it with the middle row, the actual quantity times the standard price. We're going to multiply by the standard quantity times the standard price. So the standard price is common in both. So it's the standard price multiplied by the actual quantity less the standard quantity. For raw materials, it's called a materials quantity variance. For labor, it's called a labor efficiency variance. Did it take longer or, or uh, less time to do? And for variable overhead uh, spending, uh, or for variable overhead, sorry, it's called an efficiency variance. Same with the labor variance. It's called an efficiency variance, and we're going to see why. Uh, as we go on, but as a clue, remember that the overhead is driven by the activity measure, and if it's direct labor hours, well, it's the same thing. It just measures the same efficiency. So way on this side, we have what uh, uh, this, this column is called a standard by standard. Over here, it's the actual by actual. Well, go back to chapter 9, and if you compare the standard by standard to actual by actual, what do you have? You have a flexible budget variance. So by comparing our actual quantity to our actual price with our standard quantity for our standard price, it's nothing more than the flexible budget variance. Standards allow you to break it down into a price variance here and into a quantity variance here. So just to uh, show the impact of what we're doing here, AQ times AP minus AQ times SP. Actual quantity times actual price minus the actual quantity times the standard price. Well, look at the common term in there, AQ. If you factor out AQ, you get the actual quantity multiplied by the difference between the actual price and the standard price. And this is measured at the time of purchase. So when you put, it's, it's all of these are done at the time of purchase. Here, AQ times SP minus SQ times SP. All I'm doing is I'm just showing how we got to the uh, variance. The common term is the standard price, so we just factor out standard price, and we see it's the standard price that's common to both. 
It's just the quantity that's different. Actual quantity versus the standard quantity multiplied by the standard price. And this is measured at the time of production. And we're going to see why uh, when we do an example if there are inventories. If our variance is greater than zero, it's unfavorable. If it is less than zero, it is actually favorable. So we're going to go through, uh, in the next video, we're going to go through an example, a numerical example of each of these costs.